So today uh, I can uh, I'm going to talk about tropical archery. So probably during the ne next lecture. So during this lecture, I will uh, uh, define tropical smoothness and talk a bit about uh, Poincaré duality uh, in more detail than, detail than uh, that I've done, Christine. <coughs> so everything. So. Uh, I mainly follow the, the two articles I wrote with Omid Amini that you can find on archive. So, so um, tropical smoothness. Okay, so how can we define smoothness on a tropical variety, which is quite singular a priori? I mean, because <clears throat> it's piecewise linear, it's not so clear. So we want something which uh, verifies uh, so smoothness must be a local condition. Uh, it must depend on your on, sorry depends only on the support. And um, okay, smooth tropical varieties. Uh, must verify Poincaré uh, duality. Okay, a priori, if we want a notion of smoothness which verifies this. <clears throat> so, some recall uh, of last time. So, here are some notations. I take n latis. I can take tons of product with some, some uh, fields. I take m to be its dual. If sigma is a cone, I have n sigma r, which is a tangent space. And if I, I put sigma as an upper script, then it is a quotient. So for my talk, sigma will always be a unimodular tropical fan. So we can work with non unimodular tropical fan, but OK, so it's, it, we have to be more careful. And I recall that tropical fans for me has weight uh, constant equal to one. So same remark, you can also work with uh, different weights, but you have to take care of weights everywhere. So just to simplify, I, I take this. So D will be the, its dimension. And I will work with a rational coefficient for the same reasons, just to simplify. We have to, we need more conditions for integral coefficients in general. So I write uh, overline sigma to so canonical compactification. So here it's an example. So I recall if you have a fan sigma, you can compactify it by adding g uh, at infinity. And so you, you get a, a cube. Uh, combinatorially, it's a cube. So this is sigma bar, uh, overline sigma. <coughs> And so if I have a phase two inside sigma, uh, I can look at uh, the, this phase here, which is sigma to infinity, which is just sigma quotiented by two, but we see it at infinity. So for instance, here you have a sigma, which is this red things. Here you can have two, here you have sigma to infinity. I also called uh, this infinity to Things like that. Is that clear? Okay. So combinatorially, uh, overline sigma is just a, a cubical complex of faces, and the faces are the are the the cubes. So for example, you have one face here, another face here, and so um, for example. So combinatorially, it's really a cubical complex. It means that uh, any face, uh, any face, uh, is uh, combinatorially isomorphic to a hypercube. Uh, for its latest of face, so for instance, you can have a face uh, like that, and then you will have, for instance, this face and the opposite face for each face. For each subface, you have an opposite face, subface, etc. Okay. So here, everything are combinatorial squares or segments. In higher dimension, you will have uh, 
hypercurves. So this is nice because uh, there are things we can do with cubical complex. For instance, we can define the cubical project. I will need this later. And in fact, this structure simplifies many things and let us prove many properties in compactified uh, fans. OK, so for instance, the dimension of uh, sigma tau infinity, since it is just sigma quotiented by tau, it will just be the dimension of sigma minus the dimension of tau. And so we have a natural certification, which is a <clears throat> so for instance, here I have sigma in gray. And at infinity, I can find, for instance, this is sigma tau, if tau is this phase in red. Okay, so it's an open fan. And this sigma tau lives into uh, this red uh, vector space, which is, so sorry, it's sigma tau infinity, which is n to r infinity, which is a part of the tropical uh, toric variety. So you have this gray part, this red part, this green part, etc. this blue part. All these strata are the strata at infinity, exactly as in toric geometry, you have strata at infinity. And so you have a partition of uh, the compactification of sigma into this strata. And so you can see that uh, sigma infinity tau is exactly isomorphic to sigma sigma, which uh, uh, to sigma tau, which is the uh, star fan around so, which is just uh, you can see what what looks like the fan around to you question by uh, the tangent space of to and it's exactly the same thing. <clears throat> and so there is a notion in tropical geometry. We say that the point X, which lives uh, in the strata uh, in stratum at infinity, uh, so for instance, if it lives in n sigma or infinity, we say it's that its sedentarity is Sigma. Okay, so for this red strata, the sedentarity is just two. So for instance, sigma, the open fan, is just a part of the compactification of sedentarity, the zero cone. Okay. So more or less, sedentarity zero is the finite part. So I introduce some more notations. I will write sigma k to be the set of faces of dimension k. So I have this notation for two is the subface of sigma. And if moreover two is exactly one dimension less than sigma, is a face of co-dimension one in sigma, I can I, I add a dot like that. So this is a set of rays. So if I have a ray, I not zero the generator of uh, rho intercepted with n. So you have a ray, you have the lattice like that. And so this is zero. And I denote the unit vector of n sigma normal to tau like that. It's a gothic n sigma over tau. So for instance, if sigma is like that and see, uh, sigma, sigma is this and tau is this one, I can take n sigma tau to be, for instance, this one or this one or this one. Any unit vector in the, in the sense of lattice, which is transverse to tau and which live in the, in, the, in the half space of sigma. OK? So for instance, we have the balancing condition which is for any face of co-dimension one in sigma, the sum of the, of the unit vector around uh, is, belongs to n tau. This is a balancing condition. Okay, so I make some recall about tropical cohomology and I go a little bit further because the, the problem is, uh, is that here sigma I need to, I want to define Poincaré duality for sigma, but sigma is not compact, so Poincaré duality is a bit more complicated. So I need to introduce some new notions. And as the Christine said, here we need an orientation 
because we are working with Q coefficients. <clears throat> so for each phase sigma, I choose an element of uh, the of this, which is the, the, just the uh, exterior product, uh, uh, the highest, the top dimensional uh, part of the exterior algebra. So it's isomorphic to Z, and I take one of the two generators. So for instance, for sigma, I can take. Uh, um, I can take uh, this first and then I do, uh, I make the wedge with this. So maybe it's V1, V2. I can take V1 wedge V2 for new of sigma. Or I can take the other one. It's the same. <clears throat> so these are our unit vectors. And so for two, for instance, I will take this one, new two. And so I have a sign which appears naturally, which is I choose a sign between two and sigma. So two is a phase of co-dimension one in sigma. So do you agree that this is isomorphic to Z? Yes. Okay, so I just take a generator in that one of both generator. And then if I take uh, two, I, think I, don't know, so one. I just I just missed that. That was, yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that this was the same thing as a new definition of orientation. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. I was confused by orientation. Okay, so new sigma. Yeah, sorry. It's, um, so new is different from V, maybe. Sorry, okay, maybe I should write this. It's really okay. And so this is a new. Okay, sorry. So uh, for instance, uh, here I look at mu two. I look at the normal unit vector, and so here you see that the normal unit vector which mu two, it's the opposite of uh, what I choose for new sigma. So here the sign of two sigma will be minus one. Okay. So that which is that is the opposite of that which. But for instance, if I take two, two prime to be this one, then the, with this new two prime, then I will have a positive sign, etc. Okay. So now I define FP of sigma as a Chris indeed. Uh, so if it is an element of uh, cone, so <coughs> uh, sorry. No, uh, it has no meaning. In that. Uh, it's the sum for eta greater than sigma of the exterior product, uh, the base piece exterior product of NQ. So here it's the same. Okay, so for instance, if I take two here and I take p equals to two, I can take either these things which live in the red part or these things which live in the blue part or these things which live in the gray part, but I will never have uh, these red things wedge these blue things. This does not belong to fp sigma because it does not belong to any exterior algebra of any facet. And uh, if, okay, this is if I work without any part at infinity, if I work with a face at infinity, then I will only work with faces which have, which has this, which have the same sedentarity as sigma. So for instance, if I look for FP of this point, I will only look inside this strata, this stratum, and I define FP in, the, in this stratum. And I define FP uh, as a network script to be the dual. Okay. In fact, I prefer to work with cohomology when I can, but except that it inverses everything. It's really the dual, it inverses every maps. 
it does not change anything more or less. Okay, so if I have X, which is either the fan or its compactification, I can define the complex of tropical chains and of tropical quotients. So here there is a subtleties uh, compared to uh, what Christine said is that I take only the sum over sigma, which is compact. So if X is compact, this does not change anything because every phases of uh, the compactification are compact. So it's just a sum over every phases. But for sigma, it is different. It's not, I mean, it's important. <clears throat> Mathieu, if yes. sigma is not compact, then there's only one compact cell, right? Yes. Or, sorry. Sorry. sorry, sigma as a fan only has one compact cell, I guess I should say. Yes, I would say that uh, just after. So, and it's there is only the origin. And so the cohomology is very simple. We will see that. Sorry, jumping ahead. So, just before that, I, I finished to define the cohomology. Uh, so a useful notation, if I take a face and uh, an element in FP sigma, I just write the face, the, the, the pair of the face and alpha to be the only element in CPQ is what you're seeing. So just alpha on sigma and zero anywhere else, okay? <clears throat> okay, so here I used uh, the dual. So now if two is a subface of sigma, we have an inclusion from FP2 to FP sigma. If you have a, a linear form in FP2, you can restrict it to sigma. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, not a, linear, a, a form, a P form. <clears throat> it's the same thing. And so I can define the, the boundary map, which maps uh, to alpha on the sum for sigma, uh, which is one dimension more than the dimension of two, with some signs this time of uh, just a restriction. So for this one, for instance, I will get the same P format here, here, and here. Okay, so Christine uh, already described this protodual, but so I will not uh, stay longer on this. Ah, yes, so, so except that here there is a, I don't assume that sigma has the same sedentarity of two. So if I am at infinity, the boundary goes into, into the finite part, for instance. So we can change strata with the boundary. <clears throat> okay, so here it's the cohomology. So I define the cohomology as usual as the kernel quotiented by the image and the homology is the same thing, but okay. I only define this for the cohomology. Okay, so as Christian said, uh, in fact, in Sigma, there is only one compact phase, which is the origin. So it's zero. So CPQ of Sigma is, uh, well, if Q is greater than zero, then uh, the support is empty because there is no compact basis of dimension Q. So CPQ is just zero. And if Q equals zero, then uh, the only basis of dimension zero is uh, the origin. So CPQ is just uh, FP of zero, okay? The cohomology of the fan is really simple. In fact, it's contracted. So, Contractible, that's why. And so, as you have only, okay, CP, CP1 is trivial. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, concentrated on only one degree. So, the cohomology is exactly equal to this. Nothing happened. So, uh, the complex of chains, of cochains, is equal to the cohomology and is very simple. Okay. <clears throat> okay, just a remark, uh, as usual, I mean, not as usual, but since Q has no torsion, okay, CPQ, the, the chains is naturally isomorphic, isomorphic to the um, dual of the cochains. 
and since Q has no torsion, you have the same thing is true in. Uh, is this because it's so, okay? Uh, in fact, it is also true in cohomology, in cohomology and cohomology. Okay, so is that clear for everyone? Okay, so now we have to introduce another uh, version of homology and cohomology. It's exactly the same, except that here I don't ask uh, sigma to be compact. So sigma may not be compact. So in fact, this cohomology is more interesting, a priori. Um, so here is the same. So, okay, for the homology, we call this uh, Bor the borel moore homology. And for the cohomology, we call this uh, cohomology with compact support, which will be, it's a bit strange here because uh, we are looking at the faces which are not compact, but it has a sense for shift zero, shift zero and things like that. So we define the homology and zero homology. <coughs> And so, as I said, uh, for compact, compact uh, typical varieties, uh, every faces are compact. So uh, the, the the bust inside. So we have CPQ, for instance, of C number, which is equal to CPQ of C number, and so HPQ. Is equal to HPQ of sigma bar. Okay, so this is true because uh, sigma is compact, but it's not uh, uh, the compactification of sigma is compact, but it's not true for the open fan sigma. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, we have the fundamental class. So I just so. Christine told it uh, quickly, so I come back to this. So if eta is a facet of sigma, so an element of sigma d, I have the, the orientation I choose. But this also <coughs> lived in fd of eta. So I can define the fundamental class of sigma to be just I take any new eta for eta phase. This is that. And so he lived in CDD uh, for all more. And so now I can check that uh, this is in fact a typical cycle. It means that the boundary is zero. So I, I just compute the, the, the boundary. So it's the sum over basis of co-dimension one for each facet of the sign of uh, this. And by the definition of the sign, Sign of two new eta is just this. It's really the definition of the sign. Now I can uh, exchange uh, both sums, and I have this which appears, which appears, and in fact it's exactly by the balancing condition this leads into and two. <coughs> So it lives into uh, yes and two, and so this wedge product lives into um, the wedge uh, into in nt of n two, but this is zero because the dimension of t is d minus one. Okay, so this is a so a square brackets sigma lives in the kernel uh, from CDD to CDD minus one, and so this is by definition uh, the top dimension of cohomology, uh, cohomology of sigma, and so we can call it the fundamental class of sigma. So this is uh, we need the fundamental class to define Poincaré duality. And so, more or less, you see that uh, uh, 
we have an equivalence between uh, having an element in HGT of sigma, which is a full support, and the balancing condition. Okay, it's more or less what I explained above. <coughs> so this is non empty if you are balanced, if you are tropical, for instance. I mean, if you are tropical. And if the dimension is exactly one, then you say that sigma is irreducible. So for instance, it's not the case here if you take the cross, because you have a tropical cycle here. If you take, if you put uh, this vector here and this vector here, and you have another tropical cycle here. So this is not your reducible, and so it will not be smooth. Okay, so now I can talk about Poincaré duality for sigma, which is open. <coughs> so we have still this uh, isomorphism between uh, uh, homology and cohomology in the dual of cohomology. And so I can associate to the fundamental class an element in this. I call it the degree. And so I get uh, the degree from HG of sigma uh, compact to Q, which maps eta, any facet which sum alpha to the value of alpha evaluated on uh, new eta. So you can see this as an integral of the of the deform on uh, the tropical uh, variety, if you want. And so um, sigma is simplicial, so we can define the simplicial cup product. I don't, don't want to define it here, but we get a product in the, on the cohomology which go from PQ. <clears throat> so here you have one, com this one is compact, so this one is not compact, and this one is compact. It's like that if you work with. Uh, things which are open with open varieties. And so, okay, I don't want to define this, the cup product, but recall that here, this is trivial unless Q, 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 uh, Q prime is zero. So it Q, 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 uh, sorry. this is different from zero, then this is just zero. And if Q prime equals zero, Then this is just f p prime of zero bar, and so if I have b beta here, and here I have a sigma alpha, the product will just be uh, sigma alpha which beta. I mean by beta I mean the restriction of beta into sigma. Okay, so it's very simple. And so we get a pairing. If uh, if I am in D minus PD minus Q, and here are something in PQ, I can go into the top dimensional cohomology and take the degree. Or static does otherwise, this is the dual of, we have a map from this to the dual of this. And we say that sigma reflex Poincaré duality, if the pairing is perfect, which is, uh, this is isomorphic to this. Okay, so Poincaré duality works quite well in in, uh, in the tropical world as in the usual world. If you have two fans which verify PD, so Poincaré duality, then the product also verifies Poincaré duality. It's just uh, an application of the Connet formula, which also works in the tropical world. I forgot to see here. Uh, so, of course, if sigma verifies Poincaré duality, then HPQ compact of sigma must be zero for Q less than D because, um, because uh, HPQ of sigma is dual to HD minus PD minus Q non compact of sigma. And this we say we have seen that it is zero unless Q is called equal to D, unless this is zero. 
Okay, so the cohomology is trivial except for top dimensional. Uh, I mean, if Q is is uh, equal to D. In fact, there is a reciprocal uh, by uh, Edvard Ness that uh, person told about. So I think it's this one, if I'm not mistaken. So if for any sigma in sigma and any p an integer <coughs> and q, which is uh, at most a dimension of sigma sigma, if you have hpq, uh, which is zero, unless for q is a third dimensional part for every star fans of the fan around any face. And moreover, we have to assume that for the dimension one faces around it, we are irreducible. It's more or less a, like, uh, like a strong balancing condition. Then uh, the fan ver verifies Poincaré duality. So we have a kind of reciprocal of uh, this. <coughs> Okay, so this is a part of uh, trying to classify all the of the fans which verify Poincaré duality. Okay. So sigma is still a tropical fan. Sorry, sigma. Sigma is still satisfies the balancing condition. Yes. So uh, sigma is always in unimodular and verifies a tropical uh, condition. Uh, and so what's the question, uh, is uh, the question, so this is uh, stronger than just the balancing modulation. It means that uh, around, hmm? Sure, sure, uh, what was the, you, you, you would need some, some condition to have Poincaré duality. I was just uh, trying to understand in which generality uh, this can be pushed. Uh, so sigma is a tropical fan, that was good. Yes, yes, yes. But this condition implies the balancing condition, doesn't it? Yes, it's it's a strong balancing condition. Uh, all right. In, in fact, this uh, is just equivalent to sigma eta is a tropical line, uh, I think. Uh, yes, I guess. So, so for instance, here it's true because uh, here around each vertex at infinity. I mean, not a, you have a tropical line. <coughs> um, okay, so now we have defined the uh, one and so um, so usually uh, tropical smoothness is defined thanks to Bellman fans, which, uh, as we have seen, is more or less the tropicalization of. Uh, Okay, it's more general than the tropicalization of uh, vector spaces in the toric variety. In the torus, sorry. So, okay, so with, okay, we want to generalize this notion because, uh, okay, we will see a more general notion. And I think that this notion, uh, okay, it is more general first. Most of the properties is still true for this uh, this uh, generalization, and uh, <clears throat> probably it uh, this new notion might be useful to uh, understand more uh, tropicalizations and just this, those which are locally, which locally looks like uh, uh, linear space. Okay. Anyway, so tropical smoothness. Uh, okay, there, there is a smoothness in a classical uh, geometry is something, but here it does not work. I mean, it's not easy to to adapt this notion. So um, the idea is to use Poincaré duality. So we want smoothness to imply Poincaré duality. We will doing we will do this this in the other way for us a tropical fan with this will. will have a tropical fan will be smooth if locally it verifies Poincaré duality. So here is the definition: tropical fan is smooth if, for any uh, face, the star fan around sigma verifies Poincaré duality. Okay, so 
some examples. The tropical line is smooth, okay? And black mountains are smooth. So our notion generalizes the, the, the notion of uh, being smooth is to be locally black mountains. <coughs> And so you have things which are not diamond fans, which are smooth also. It's not obvious, but <coughs> it is the case. Okay, so this is smoothness for a fan, but we want uh, to know what is smoothness for a tropical variety. So let me just uh, sketch what is a, a tropical variety in general. So, <coughs> A tropical variety is a topical, topological space which is covered by open sets, and each open set is homeomorphic to an xi. This xi is um, an open set of the compactification, no, sorry, the partial compactification of a polyhedral space in Tn. So you take a uh, you take a polyhedral space in Rn. And you compactify it by adding some part at infinity. And so locally, you look like that, really. So this is for an extended polyhedral space. And moreover, it's a so to glue the different open covering, you use extended affine maps. And if you want a uh, uh, tropical, tropical variety, you, ask, you add one condition, which is uh, the political space you want it to be balanced or tropical. <clears throat> okay, so for instance, you have uh, the affine space Tn, you have any tropical hypersurfaces in Tpn. In the tropical hypersurface in TPN. So here it's tropical hypersurface in TPN. So it's compactifying the the the, the tetrahedron, which is TPN, the infinite tetrahedron. You have tropical fans. You have the compactification of tropical fans. You have also the flat torus. If uh, this is a, a tropical variety. Okay, so you have many things, interesting things. And so I define, I say that a tropical variety is smooth if it is locally isomorphic to an open set of the form, a fan, which is smooth, the support of a fan, which is smooth, times T to the K. So for instance, uh, okay, you have complete fans, you have permanent fans, we have non singular tropical hypersurfaces, which are smooth, also, I think. <coughs> and you have also, uh, for example, this is smooth. Why? Because here, okay, here, okay, the fan, uh, the fan is smooth. And so the compactification of the fan is also smooth. So it's what I want to prove now. So first, some properties. Smoothness is stable by product because Poincaré duality is stable by product more or less. Uh, smoothness only depends on the support. This is because um, we can also define the cohomology with uh, a shift theoretic uh, cohomology, which only depends on the support. So you can see FP as a shift. And so, okay, you don't need to, to find a triangulation to do everything. Smoothness is a local condition. This is more or less tautological by definition. Okay, so we have the properties we wanted except point casualty, which will come later. And so I, uh, as I state, <coughs> I, have, I have stated just before, if sigma is smooth, then the compactification of sigma is smooth. Why? Because if sigma is smooth, then sigma sigma is smooth for any sigma or very fast Poincaré duality. And so for instance, around this open set, we just have sigma, which is smooth. Here, so this is two. 
around two, you have uh, sigma two times R, but this is smooth and this is smooth, so the product is smooth. And around infinity two, you have sigma two times C, which is also smooth. So this is smooth, this is smooth, so this, the whole thing is smooth. So you are at smooth. Compactification of a uh, fan which is smooth is smooth. And now the last properties, the last property we wanted for, <coughs> for our tropical varieties was to verify Poincare ideality. And so indeed, a smooth tropical variety X verifies Poincare ideality. So, okay, this is a theorem of Gel, Schwann, Smaka. Uh, it was the the, or the, the other version of uh, smoothness with uh, Bagman fans, but actually the proof uh, is uh, uh, generalized directly. <clears throat> so in particular, if sigma is smooth, then sigma, the compactification of sigma is smooth, so it verifies Poincare ideality. So the idea of the proof is just uh, okay. Locally, you are, you are things which are smooth, so verify Poincaré ideality times something which verifies Poincaré ideality. So you verify Poincaré ideality, and uh, the then you have to glue every. You have to prove that if you are the union of two things which were which are smooth, then you still verify Poincaré ideality, etc. You have to glue everything together. Okay. Any question? Uh, there's uh, other properties of Bergman fans that make them seem like smooth, or I guess non-singular. So for uh, algebraic varieties, for example, they have equivalence of A and Cartier divisors. Do your fans that you call smooth, do they also have equivalence of A and Cartier divisors? Smooth seems like just a purely homological condition. Um, so, can you just translate what it means for tropical in the tropical? So every co-dimension one tropical cycle. Mm -hmm. That's a V divisor, a tropical V divisor, mm -hmm. should be uh, given by a Cartier divisor. So a. Okay. So what I can say is that for tropical fans, every G is always principal, but. Uh... Okay. That's maybe enough. Okay, um, yes. So locally, it's probably true. Uh, globally, I don't know. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for now, we have. Okay, so I said that. Uh, the compactification of sigma verifies Poincaré ideality, but I don't say it, I didn't say what is Poincaré ideality for the compactification of sigma. So as I said, uh, the compactification of sigma is a cubical um, is a cubical uh, complex. So we can define the cubical cup product on it, and so we can define everything again, and we have the natural definition of Poincaré ideality. But it's not very clear what it means. So I stated uh, at the end of the last talk uh, that the cohomology of the compactification of sigma is the same thing as the Turing, and it's very easier to understand the product on the Turing. So let me uh, talk in um, more details about the Turing of the fan. <coughs> So first, I have to say that uh, the cohomology uh, of uh, the compactification is trivial for p greater than q. So it's not trivial, but for instance, uh, okay, let's let me try to justify. For instance, if you take uh, an element of f two of zero here, so I here I try to prove that h two zero of the compactification is trivial. <coughs> So if I take an element in F2 of zero here, then I can take the same. Okay, it's not always true, but 
I can take the, the same linear form. No, sorry. Okay, no, it's new. I thought it was, it was very, it was. Uh, okay, forget this. Sorry. So maybe it's not so easy to justify. Um, and probably it's in the other direction. Okay, sorry. So it's true. Okay, <laughs> to do this, uh, we we can use a uh, we have to use uh, the cubical uh, structure of the time, and there is a spectral sequence, etc. Yeah. <clears throat> so if uh, the compactification of sigma verifies Poincaré duality, by duality we also have HPQ of uh, the compactification of sigma, which is zero for p less than q. And so it's zero unless for p q q. Okay, so everything is concentrated in basically pp. <clears throat> and so now, in fact, we have a k of sigma, which is isomorphic to h k k of the compactification of sigma. So I will state the precise theorem later. So we can just understand the cohomology of the compactification then uh, thanks to the Turing of sigma. This is the Turing of sigma. So let me uh, define again the Turing of sigma. So it's a it's a algebra of polynomials uh, over Q uh, with the variables are given by the rays of the fan, quotiented by two ideals. So first, I use this notation. So if f is a subset of uh, of rays. Then xf is just the product of the x ray, uh, x row for row and element of f. So the first ideal is the ideal of non faces of sigma, which is the ideal generated by the xf for f a subset of, of sigma one, and f is not a face of sigma. So it's the ideal of non faces. And i2. Is uh, generated by the linear maps. So if you take a linear map, you can look at the sum of the L evaluated in the at e row of x row for each ray. And so you quotient by this. And so here you have a natural graduation, which is a graduation given by uh, the degree of the polynomials. So let me give some examples. So here is the tropical lines with a, I mean, it's a, a projective fan. <clears throat> so to simplify, I will write x1 instead of x row one. So first you always have a zero of sigma, which is q. Now, if you look at a1 sigma, so a priori you have x1 inside it, x2 and x0. Then I can look at the, the linear map, which is zero on this, which is one on this. And so it will be equal to minus one on this, okay? So this means that uh, x1 minus x0 belongs to i1, i2, sorry, okay? So uh, in A1, X1 equals A2, A, X0. So in the same way, I can look at the at zero zero map, which is one here and minus one here, and I get X2 equals to X0. So in fact, A1 is just isomorphic to, uh, to Q time X, and it is of dimension one. Now, if I look at A2 of sigma, so inside it, you have x1 square, x1, x2, etc. But all these things are equal. So once again, uh, this is just, uh, this is just uh, q times, uh, for example, x1, x1, x2. Okay, so let's look at A3 of sigma this time. 
to A3 of sigma, you have, for instance, x1 cube inside it. But this is equal to x1 square x2. And this is equal to x1, x2, x3. But 1, 2, 3 is not a phase. I mean, row 1, one row 2, row 3 is not a phase of sigma. So this is just 0. OK, so this is a more general fact. A k of 0 is always 0 if uh, a k of sigma is always 0 for k more than the, the dimension of the, the fan. And another interesting fact is that a k sigma is just generated by the x sigma for sigma and sigma k. This means that it's generated by square free monomials. OK, you don't need x1 square if you have x1, x2. So here you have another example. Here you will you will see that x1 equals x3 and x2 equals x4. So in fact, uh, a1 will be q2. In a, in a2, you will have x1, x2. x1 square will be 0. And this is, in fact, the, zero, the, the only element, et cetera. OK, so it's really easier to compute with the Turing, uh, at least if the plan is not too complicated. Is that clear? <clears throat> okay, so now Poincaré duality for sigma for the Turing is uh, can be defined because if sigma is union modular and tropical, then A D of sigma you have a natural degree map which maps uh, x eta on one. In fact, you have uh, x eta which is equal to this is not true. So. Um, OK, so this is well defined. You can map x eta to 1. <clears throat> OK, so now is the main theorem. Uh, you have an isomorphism between HKK of, uh, of the compactification of sigma and the Turing of sigma. For this, you map delta alpha, is delta in sigma compacted by k, onto the evaluation. Uh, okay, if delta is of the non which is zero, so in fact delta is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a cone of sigma of the open part, then you you can evaluate uh, nu of delta uh, by alpha and you multiply by x delta. So for instance, if I, if I have a tropical fan. And here I have a linear form which equals one here. This will be mapped onto uh, just x for one. But if it is a linear map which is zero, for instance, this is the kernel of the linear map is this, this will be mapped onto zero. And so faces at infinity, we don't care. We just map everything onto zero. And so this is an isomorphism. And this isomorphism is compatible with the product and the degree map. So in particular, if sigma is smooth, the whole cohomology of sigma is concentrated in B degree PP. And we have the isomorphism between the cohomology of the compactification of sigma and, and the Turing. <coughs> OK, any question? Okay, maybe I can just, I have still a bit of time, so I will just introduce a quasi protective fan and then I will stop. So um, I define L sigma to be the, the, the function, the continuous function on the support of sigma, which are, which are conwise linear. So for instance, I can take uh, the, the, the fan, which is the, the function, which is zero on 
on E1, 0 on E2, and minus 1 on E0, OK? And uh, OK, there is a, a unique way to uh, propagate this, to extend this to the whole time. So it will be 0, so it will be zero here. Here it will decrease. Here it will decrease with some slope. <coughs> OK, so I want it to be Fenway's linear and continuous. So there is a natural map from uh, this Conway linear function to the Turing. I can map F uh, in the same way than for the linear maps. I evaluate F uh, on each unit vector of each ray and then multiply by X ray. So for instance, this one will be mapped to minus X rho, X zero. And so the kernel of this map is by definition, uh, I. Uh, not I1, but uh, I, I1 in particular. A1, AI, A2, that's a good one. A1, which is just uh, the restriction of MQ uh, on the, in L sigma. So it's just the linear forms. So you have piecewise linear forms, which goes into A1, and the linear ones uh, are mapped to zero. So in tropical archery, we need a notion of positivity for an amount of uh, H11 or A1 here. And so we can say positivity or openness of, or complexity, et cetera. And so here the question is, what is a convex function, a strictly convex function? And the convex will be strict. So in the usual world, a function is convex if, so this is F, if under each point I can find a tangent which is below. So it means that uh, there exists um, an, a function L, an affine function L, L affine. So for all X, there exists an affine function F, such that F minus L is zero on X and strictly positive around, okay? So here we will uh, use exactly the same uh, definition. So F in L sigma is convex if for any sigma in sigma, that exists. There exists uh, L in M, the jet in Q, the jet F minus L is zero and sigma. And F minus L is strictly positive on a neighborhood of the entire, the relative entire of sigma. So for instance, here it's concave, but if I uh, replace uh, minus one by plus one, it's convex because uh, for instance, uh, around this point, around this space, this is already zero. And if I add a, a linear map, which is maybe a half here and minus a half here, it will be strictly positive around. And so this is true for this, but also around the zero region and around each ray. And so the image of a convex function into A1 is called a numpel, a numpel uh, class, a numpel element. And so I denote the, same, the set of numpel elements by K sigma, which is included in A1 sigma. So it's an open convex cone in F sigma. And I said that sigma is quasi productive if, uh, if there is at least one numpel cone, an element. 
and uh, the compactification of sigma is called projective. And so projectivity will be uh, uh, not necessary, but uh, not sufficient in tropical geometry. Uh, condition to have such a, I mean, it will be useful to have a fudge theory for fans. Okay, so I, I guess I stop here. <laughs>